Hello and welcome to a podcast where I will be reading from random books. Okay, I'm testing out a new app on my iPad, so I just want to see if it records nicely. Okay, so the first book is The X-Files, Book of the Unexplained, Volume 1. I loved The X-Files when I was a kid growing up. I used to watch it every single week. So this book is was published in 1996. So the premise of this podcast is literally just going to be random pages selected using a random number generator. Okay, so this is a confidential memo to Dana Scully. Our discovery that unknown government agencies have possession of extraterrestrial biological tissue matter that they have sanctioned and funded unimaginable research projects, that they will guard their secrets at any cost, only confirms those dark fears and suspicions that have been growing since my investigation began. The murder of my ally, the denial of all that I've seen, and now the forced dissolution of the X-Files only heightens my conviction that I have never been closer to the truth. Chris Carter, who was the creator of the X-Files, said, I believe that there were investigations into UFOs by the government. I think that's pretty clear, and the government has has admitted that much. But is it ongoing? I don't know. I'd like to think it is for my purposes. We on the X-Files certainly believe it still is. It's a general government paranoia that we try to bring to light. During a private White House screening of E.T., President Reagan said to Steven Spielberg, if people only knew how true this really was. Perhaps you've heard this one before. But the difference, however, is that for the first time, we can reveal that the Spielberg-Reagan story is absolutely, unquestionably true. It is reprinted here with permission from Mr. Spielberg's representatives, who were also kind enough to provide us with the correct wording of the President's comment. In some versions of the story, he is reported as saying, there are only about six people in this room who know how who know how true this is whether or not reagan knew some great truth he was certainly not afraid to have his name linked with the concept of extraterrestrial intelligence he publicly recounted two personal ufo sightings and on three separate occasions made public speculations on how a threat from outer space would unify all nations This sentiment was also shared by Soviet President Gorbachev. This could have been merely an eccentric and rather effective hypothetical statement on how unity is possible, but some are convinced it was an attempt to hand us a morsel of information or at least to soften us up for the day when the truth would finally be revealed. There are degrees of belief the U.S. government is more interested in UFOs than they make out. They know who is behind the unidentified craft which seem to dot our skies. They possess craft recovered in crashes. They have alien bodies. They have communicated with live aliens. They have liaised with them and made deals. There are alien bases on Earth. It's all over the bar, the shouting. But no matter which end of the spectrum a believer occupies, there is one common certainty. The government is hiding something. Jimmy Carter appears to have been another believer. During his 1976 election campaign, he confirmed that he and others had observed a large, bright, airborne object change colour for 10 minutes one night in Leary, Georgia, in 1969, he vowed, I'll never make fun of people who say they've seen unidentified objects in the sky. And he promised that if he became president, he would make all information about UFOs available to the public and scientists. However, his election pledge remained unfulfilled.
fact, official documents have revealed that he did try his best. He wrote to NASA, President Eisenhower was rumoured to have witnessed a demonstration of extraterrestrial flight technology. On the surface, government involvement with UFOs is an above-board matter. The British Ministry of Defence welcomes and investigates reports of UFOs. However, according to RAF press officer David Davis, the MOD does not have any direct interest, expertise or role in respect of UFO flying saucer flying saucer matters or those relating to the existence or otherwise of extraterrestrial life forms about which we remain totally open-minded. To date, the MOD is not aware of any evidence which substantiates the existence of extraterrestrial craft or life forms. The US government's first official investigations into UFO sightings began in 1947 with the United States Air Force's Project Sign. After internal squabbles, this venture went into near abandonment a few years later as the UFO refuting Project Grudge until a flurry of fresh sightings in 1951 spurred a revival of the program and it was renamed Project Blue Book. For years, however, Blue Book primarily served a grudge-like PR function of dispelling and explaining away any and all incidents, including the notorious lame swamp gas analysis of some credible 1966 sightings. The public lambasting they took for this dismissive sham helped lead the Air Force in 1969 to pull the plug on Blue Book. Since then, the USA has had no official interest in UFOs. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks to the 1966 Freedom of Information Act, thousands of documents released by such agencies as the CIA, FBI, Air Force, Coast Guard, Defense Intelligence Agency, Federal Aviation Administration, the Navy, North American Aerospace Defense Command, and the once super-secret National Security Agency revealed the American government's abiding interest in UFOs, contradicting the flimsy official pretense of indifference. And this does not include the documents still held back in the name of national security. A character known as Deep Throat in the X-Files said, Roswell was a smokescreen, there have been half a dozen better salvage operations. In closing, let us pretend the government knows the truth, so why won't they tell us? There is a school of thought which says that they are telling us through a subtle process of indoctrination. Bob Oshler tracked down a copy of a 1960 report commissioned by NASA from the Brookings Institute, America's most venerable think tank think tank, he says. They were trying to determine what the social implications would be of revelations of face-to-face -face contact with an alien culture. The conclusions? The result would be a process called acculturation, acculturation, where human beings worldwide would ultimately become subservient to such a society. And in order to avoid that process of acculturation, it was deemed that a long-term indoctrination process would be the solution to avoiding that. And there are, are those who think that movies like E.T. and Close Encounters are part of an indoctrination process, even, heaven forbid, The X-Files. There again, there is one more explanation for why the government is saying nothing possibly the scariest one of all. There is no conspiracy, no aliens, just us, alone in space for now. Glenn Morgan voices one of the most convincing arguments against. Scully says that line to the lone gunman. You know, I think you're giving the government too much credit, and I think if the government could barely cover up selling arms to the Contras, that a UFO cover-up 
would have been exposed. I just don't think the government's that good at doing it.